Welcome to Westworth United Church as we celebrate online worship for Easter Sunday. We welcome those from Westworth as well as those from other churches across Winnipeg and even across our country from Saskatchewan, Ontario, New Brunswick and Nova Scotia as well as from other countries, the United States, Mexico, England and Germany. Welcome to everyone. If you would like to receive weekly updates about what is happening in our congregation, please make sure that we have your email address. We just sent an email, a congregational email out last Thursday, so if you didn't receive it, it means that we don't have your email. So you can contact the church office about that. This is the time of year when we also receive uh, donations for special appeals, and these help various local nonprofit organizations, including West Broadway Community Ministry. If you are able to support our special appeals this year, at a time when they are probably needed more than ever, please contact our church office by tomorrow. We have set up a confidential prayer circle that is now meeting every Wednesday from 11 till noon um, by uh, online, through online. So please let me know if you'd like to join the prayer circle. Uh, also, if you have any prayer requests to give to us that we can include in our prayers. Next Sunday is going to be our online Earth Day service. And uh, as you may have heard in previous service announcements, I invite you to imagine that you are the Earth. What message would you want to give to us humans? Be creative um, if you have some poetic or pictorial uh, ideas that come to mind, please send them my way and we might be able to include some of your reflections in next Sunday service. Um, I, would need, I would need them pretty soon. I would need them by um, uh, the end of today, if possible. And now we acknowledge with gratitude and respect the original inhabitants of this land. We who live, work, and worship on Treaty 1 land and receive water from Shoal Lake on Treaty 3 land are all Treaty people. Let us now relax, shake off that tension, and prepare ourselves for worship. Christina Thanish Smith will light the Christ candle as we pray that the light of Christ will shine forth hope and peace throughout the whole world. And to this end, we take the light from the Christ candle and light the peace candle, praying for shalom, peace, healing, and well-being throughout the world. Let us now say together our traditional Easter greeting, and you will see the words up on your screen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Let us now 
sing together if you have a hymnal at home. Uh, number 155 from Voices United, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Let us pray a prayer for resurrection. Though we all hide cocooned in fear, our faith proclaims that Christ is here. The bonds of death are rent asunder, yet still restrained, we wait in wonder. What new life will replace the loss? How can love rise from the dross? Grant us hope, new eyes to see, new hands to hold, new strength to be. The risen Christ will bring us through to kinder ways and justice true for those bowed down from crushing weight of contagious greed and scourge of hate. Sing a new song for suffering earth. Pray a new prayer for its rebirth. God, use our hands to love yet more this world, your body, to adore. May the peace of Christ be with you. 
Let us now prayerfully send the peace of Christ to those around the world, as well as in our own community. Today's Gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 to 10. Matthew's version of the story of Christ's resurrection has two women, both by the name of Mary, going early in the morning to the tomb where Jesus was laid. Matthew describes the fear of the religious leaders that Jesus' disciples might take Jesus' body and then tell everyone that he had been raised from the dead. They went to Governor Pilate and asked for a guard of soldiers to be placed at the tomb until after the third day. But the day following Jesus' crucifixion, the guards were unable to prevent the stone that had sealed the grave from being rolled back. Forces much larger than theirs, or indeed any human hands, were at work. Now reading from Matthew. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came, rolled back the stone, and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guard shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the gospel of Christ. Thanks be to God.
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, our God. Amen. Within this wild roller coaster ride of emotions, I tried to pay attention to the emotions of the characters in our story of Jesus' resurrection. They too were on a wild emotional roller coaster kind of ride. As the first day of the week was dawning, the Gospel of Matthew tells us that two women, both by the name of Mary, went to the tomb of Jesus. And when they arrived, they were met by a thunderous earthquake, a flash of light revealing an angel who said to them, do not be afraid. Jesus, whom you seek, has been risen. And you are now to go and tell other people well, as the women hurried back, they ran into the risen Christ, who also said to them, Do not be afraid. The women were still shaking in fear, and yet they began to notice a tiny seed of hope that began to take root in their hearts. Fear and joy, all mixed up together with the other overwhelming emotions of 
grief and of shock. Their world had been irreversibly turned upside down for the worse until they met the risen Christ. Their world would not change back to their old normal, but Christ gave them hope for what lay ahead. They would find a new normal that would involve transformation. Easter has traditionally been the time of confirmation and baptisms, and we, in fact, were supposed to have six confirmations of our youth on this day. That has been postponed, not cancelled, so it will still happen at some time. The Anglicans uh, apparently have decided that when they first return back to worship in person, they will celebrate Easter again in a big way. I'd like to follow their suit. And perhaps we'll be able to include the uh, confirmations for that Sunday as well. You can never have too many Easter celebrations, for Christ rises again and again in our hearts. Our baptism and our confirmation liturgies talk about dying to an old way of life and rising to a new way of being. These words are particularly poignant this year, when our old way of life may never return. This past week, I've gradually become aware that the world has undergone such loss that it will not be possible to return to the old ways. We are experiencing loss of life, of jobs, of income, of businesses, on a greater level of magnitude than any of us have ever experienced. There is an unbelievable amount of suffering and of grief. We are actually experiencing the five stages of grief. Some are still in denial, refusing to keep their physical distance. Others are incredibly angry, striking out at those who are trying to enforce rules of safety. Still others are bargaining, saying, we just need to stick it out a little longer, and then everything will return to normal. Some are entering into depression, realizing that what was will no longer be. The final stage of grief is acceptance, and I don't know anyone who has reached that stage yet. These stages of grief will happen cyclically, over and over, as if we're in a dance of grief. They are not linear. To be able to process this grief, to move through it to healing, the key is to allow ourselves to feel it, to feel each stage of grief. Even if they take us to some pretty dark places, there is no shortcut through grief. We have to walk through that valley of the shadow of death. And we need to be gentle with ourselves, because grief takes a lot of energy, a lot of work. And so if you're tired, allow yourself to sleep some more. Don't try to maintain the same level of work that you have done before, because it is impossible to maintain in a healthy way. Martha Beck notes that our old rickety rigid and polarized institutions across the globe have increasingly oppressed billions of people and the very earth itself. They are simply unsustainable. If humanity and earth are to survive, there needs to be some massive change. Well, that massive change is beginning to happen right now. This towering tsunami is crashing in, breaking down old structures and washing away their foundations. Martha Beck suggests that to survive this massive change, we need to adopt what she calls a fluid intelligence, the kind that babies have. This intelligence says that we need to stay in the present, to be keenly observing, to always adapt, and to forever learn. Instead of trying to rush back into our old structures of refuge, which are irreparably crumbling, 
we need to ride out that tsunami wave, supporting each other, each with our own flood of emotions. We can't avoid suffering. We need to go through it, feel it, and find each other to help bring each other through it into a new way of living. The butterfly has long symbolized the transformation of a new life in Christ. I recently learned what happens inside that cocoon. The caterpillar doesn't simply go to sleep and then wake up as a butterfly. Rather, its digestive juices actually disintegrate its own body as it turns into a gooey caterpillar soup. All of its tissues, except what are called imaginal discs, disintegrate. Those imaginal discs are the, are the pieces that develop each part of the butterfly's body, fed by that surrounding protein-rich soup. And so this tells us that the caterpillar must actually physically die in order for the butterfly to be birthed. In our time of cocooning, some things will die. Some people will die. But most of us will emerge into a new life. We won't be able to return to the old as much as we will want to take refuge in the familiar. And so I pray that we will remain open to what is, not pine for what was. Unless, of course, that's toilet paper, but that's a whole nother thing. I pray that we will be able to live with fluid and compassionate intelligence that will be able to adapt and create a kinder world for the most vulnerable. We have a lot of fears as we come into the dawn of a new day, but there we will find the stone that has protected our old ways rolled back, revealing new life that is rising from the dead. There we will find a seed of joy planted in our hearts. In the face of grief and loss, the risen Christ gives us hope. Peter Denton noted in a Winnipeg Free Press article that the word hope in the Maasai language means the faith that what is done right aligns with how the universe is meant to unfold for a continual blessing from generation to generation as part of the rhythm of life. As Christians, we have a clear map of how the universe is meant to unfold. God's love is our motivating force, compassion our means, justice our plumb line, and shalom, meaning peace, wholeness, well-being, is our goal. This is the kingdom of God, the new world order for which we have long prayed and to which we have long worked towards. I have preached often, for decades actually, about the kingdom of God, but this is the first time that it's becoming real to me. This is the first time that we may just begin to see that arc of that moral universe begin to bend toward justice. And history actually supports this optimism. Gino Distasio notes that during the Industrial Revolution, Europe dealt with wave upon wave of infectious diseases that took a tremendous toll on their population. Each time, they were forced to study and evaluate the causes and the preventions of disease. These times of rebuilding led to reform from which we still benefit. Building and occupancy standards and codes were developed. We learned how to separate clean water from the sewage. We learned how to treat water. We realized the brutal outcomes of overcrowding, poverty, and the lack of sanitation. Now, mind you, we still have a long way to go in 
implementing these learnings, particularly amongst the poorest within our country and especially on the reserves and in other countries. But we know what to do. Looking back points the way forward. History gives us hope that the new world that will emerge will be kinder and more just for all, more cooperative and less polarized. It's actually starting to happen right now. A Chinese company named Xiaomi shipped crates containing ten, tens of thousands of respirators to Italy. And stapled to the side of the crates was an ancient line of poetry from the Roman philosopher Seneca. And it read this, We are waves from the same sea, leaves from the same tree, and flowers from the same garden. We are seeing sworn enemies and partisan politics morph into compassionate relationships of cooperation. We're gaining a new appreciation for workers in essential services, some of whom only receive minimum wage. But these are the people who are now the new heroes. Communities are creatively reaching out to support one another, and people's front windows are becoming billboards of hope. Nancy and I went a few days ago on a hope hunt as we took pictures of people's front room windows with some of those messages, and you'll see some pictures of them right now. You'll see, as we saw, white hearts in support of the frontline workers. A bit of a deeper meaning to a whiteout party. We saw teddy bears that children can count, and tissue-papered rainbows of hope. My favorite was at Christine Mitchell's house, with a sign that read, Thus, also highly contagious, kindness, patience, love, compassion, enthusiasm, positive attitude, resilience, hope. Be the carriers. I was speaking with Anglican Bishop Jeff Woodcroft last week, and he said that we Christians are fully equipped to help lead in this new world order. Now's the time to let our light shine. Now's the time for us to really believe that we are an Easter people full of compassion and hope, rising to a new way of being. Thanks be to God. Amen. I hold before you this offering plate. I would like you to imagine one act of love that you will commit to doing this week. If you have a paper and pencil handy, write it down on a little piece of paper. Place it virtually in this offering plate. And then after the service, I invite you to take that piece of paper and pin it to a bulletin board or stick it on the fridge as an IOU of love. See how far we can spread Christ's love. And we also, as we continue our ministry here at Westworth United Church, invite you to consider donating to our ministry, continuing if you are part of our ministry. There is a donation button on our website. The office is open to be able to make e-transfers um, and Snail mail through Canada Post with old-fashioned checks still does the trick. So let's now take a few moments of meditation as we reflect on how we can be Christ's hands and feet of love this week.
Let us pray together. God of grace, we are grateful for the moments of life, both large and small, that visit us each day. We thank you for the snowdrops beginning to poke out through the snow, assuring us that spring really is on its way. We thank you for the children laughing in the puddles. We thank you for gifts of compassion and kindness. We are grateful for your gifts of love, born through suffering, living through death. Let us, with gratitude, offer our little gifts of love this week. With a whirlwind of emotions tumbling over each other, we offer to you, Holy One, our tears and our laughter, our sighs and our groans, our fear and our joy. Grant us hope even when death increases in magnitude. Give us the taste of a new earth and a new day, even when we grieve our losses. Help us hang on to those precious moments of joy, even if we are hanging on by a thread. Strengthen those who work day and night to bring us healing, to attend to our essential needs. Bring healing to those who are ill in body and in mind. Comfort those who grieve the loss of loved ones. We pray today for the families of Bobby Holland, who died two Sundays ago, and Janet Bowles, who died last Sunday. We pray also for Mary Ringstrom, whose husband Dennis died a few weeks ago. Strengthen our resolve, O God, to be your hands and feet in this wounded world, that you may bring healing through our actions and our words. We pray this through the risen Christ, who taught us to pray.
Blessing in the Chaos by Jan Richardson from St. Francis in the, in the Wood Anglican Church in Vancouver. To all that is chaotic in you, let there come silence. Let there be a calming of the clamoring, a stilling of the voices that have laid their claim on you, that have made their home in you, that go with you even to the holy places, but will not let you rest will not let you hear your life with wholeness or feel the grace that fashioned you. Let what distracts you cease. Let what divides you cease. Let there come an end to what diminishes and demeans and let depart all that keeps you in its cage. Let there be an opening into the quiet that lies beneath the chaos, where you find the peace you did not think possible and see what shimmers within the storm. And now may the grace of the risen Christ and the love of God and the Holy Spirit sustain you on this Easter day. Amen. <laughs>